Okay, so why am I so obsessed with these Spanish urban sketches? There's just something about them. Like, has anyone else noticed it? It's this joyous playfulness, a light with colour and whimsy and, well, like, childlike glee. I mean this in the nicest way possible, and Spanish urban sketcher and illustrator Maru Godas, who I should be referencing later on too, even holds workshops called Gouache Like a Child. And when I refer to sketches being childlike, I mean filled with magic and wonder and little worry or anxiety for trifling matters like perspective. I am so in love with this style. So I just want to show you some quotes from Picasso because he kind of embodies this idea of of sketching like a child. So one of his famous quotes is, every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. And then his other quote, famous quote is, It took me four years to paint like Raphael, but a lifetime to paint like a child. So I think those are just two very poignant quotes from someone like Picasso. So I could waffle on for ages, but I'm not going to. Let's just get into it and look at some of the work of my most favourite Spanish urban sketchers who sketch in this style. This video is going to make you want to sketch in your sketchbook immediately. I'm just warning you, okay? So if you're at work right now, sorry. Okay, so the first sketcher I want to mention is Inma Serrano, and if you're a Patreon member, you know I'm like a bit obsessed. She is one of my urban sketching idols. Before I get into telling you how much I love Inma's work, I have something exciting to share with you though. Inma Serrano finally has a Domestica class. I have been anticipating this very moment for a long time now, and I'm so, so happy she's finally joined the ranks of the other incredible urban sketchers who also have Domestica classes. So if you want a rundown of those classes, you can check out my previous video here. Although, obviously, since I made that video, there are even more great classes to choose from. So if you want to check out Inma's Domestica class, Use the link in the description below, along with my very special 10% off discount code, which you need to enter at checkout. So check out the uh, description below this video to get that discount code. Now, when I first got into urban sketching, I'll be honest, I didn't get in my style or the style in general that we're looking at today. And I think some of you watching this video may also not get it. And that's that's okay. You like what you like and you don't like what you don't like and sometimes it's hard to even express why. However, I can see my tastes have evolved massively over the years so don't be scared of that, don't fight it, just embrace it. For example, when I was 14 years old I thought Cradle of Filth was the best band in the world and that horror was the best genre of anything and why would people even bother listening to any other kind of music than heavy metal? I played guitar all day, every day and nothing else existed to me at all. But now I like indie folk and watercolour painting. Who knew? <laughs> so my point is, things change. So just, yeah, keep keep that mind wide open. Okay, ran over. Anyway, Inma. I can't remember when it is I fell in love with Inma's work, but I have a guilty secret. I have watched her section of the Sketchbook School watercolour rules course at least 20 times. Just her section. I just love watching her sketchbook tours and then watching her demos, and I think I just can't get enough of her process, or lack thereof. It's difficult to work out what or how someone does something when they don't really follow a structure, but then Inma's work, I feel, wouldn't be so magical if there was like a distinct structure or process to what she's doing. She just sort of responds to her surroundings, including the energy of a place, and I don't think Inma's style would translate so well if she was sketching from photos. You can tell her work is on location because it just oozes with energy and movement and atmosphere. So I think I've I've watched and rewatched that sketchbook school section because there isn't really too much of Inma around on the internet otherwise, uh, doing tutorials or anything like that. So that's why I was really desperately hoping she would one day do a Domestica class and and here we are. Um, So that's nice. So she actually mentions in her Domestica class that it was interesting for her to put the class together because she had to think about her way of sketching and try to actually figure out what she is doing and distill that into a process for the means of teaching and showing other people. So I think she draws and paints so intuitively, it's really difficult for her to slow down and break it down for others to understand. But obviously, I mean, she does do that in the Domestica class and she's got a bunch of exercises and that kind of thing. It's, it's really cool. I'm only halfway through at the moment. Something she says, which is something I've been exploring with my Patreons this month, is the pressure we feel to try and represent what's in front of us, um, like accurately, 
And Inma tells us that whether the drawing represents what we see is not really that important, but sketching with strength and personality is kind of the key. And this is really the essence of what I'm personally trying to work on at the moment or trying to work towards. I'm really trying to let go of my attempts to draw precise renditions of what I see, not that I ever manage that anyway, by the way, and just flow more with the energy of the place and like use color in more of an intuitive way and, you know, just not be scared to just kind of let go and just like really go for it, you know? So these are my latest attempts. And I'm really enjoying the process of sketching on top of pre-painted backgrounds. It's really helping me to loosen up as well as play with different materials, which is also a key part of Inma's style. So she plays with uh, watercolor and color pencils and even crayons as well, picking up whatever she feels like using at the time. The other awesome thing I learned from watching her in the sketchbook school course is that even though she works in large A4 sketchbooks, she just uses a brush with a water in the handle, you know, like a water brush, one like this on the screen. And it's amazing to see her paint with it. She, she loves to use bigger format sketchbooks as she feels more free and has space to be much more expressive and loose. And she's not too concerned with the quality of the paper either. It's definitely a thinner paper. I think it's around 96 uh, GSM or something like that. It's a Canson uh, book that she tends to use. So the paper is thinner and it buckles a bit, but she doesn't care. And like many of us, she said, because it's a bit of a cheaper, thinner paper, it's less intimidating and you can kind of just go for it rather than worrying about using expensive watercolor book uh, paper. So Inma does have a book out as well. I don't actually have it, which is um, a bit of a bummer, but I don't know why I don't own it. It's kind of crazy. So I need to rectify that as soon as I can. But you can uh, get it off Amazon or uh, it's probably readily available in like uh, Spain and stuff, like in the bookshops and stuff. So, but yeah, you can get it on Amazon. As I mentioned, she also has a domestic course. Make sure you use my discount code below to get 10% off. And by the way, if you're interested in taking a closer look at this style of sketching, do go over and check out my Patreon um, page. I create weekly tutorials and inspirations centered around a different theme each month. So at the moment, this month in May 2022, we are looking at sketching with freedom and we're checking out the work of sketches such as these uh, mentioned in this video and doing some exercises to try and break down how they achieve their whimsical loose styles. So I now want to move on to highlight another Spanish sketcher called Santi Salas. Um, I love how Santi composes sketchbook spreads. His way of constructing and sketching inside boxes across the page just reminds me of like a comic book or a graphic novel layout. And you can watch him doing this in a couple of his YouTube videos. He doesn't speak, but it's really interesting to just watch him draw and paint, to be honest with you. I also love the way he puts swatches of colors in his sketches. And he does it in such an organic way, like he's just simply testing his colors. But I do suspect it is there for design purposes as well. Santi is both a professional illustrator and a graphic designer and has worked for some big clients, including people like Vanity Fair and stuff. So you can certainly see this graphic design influence in his sketching, the way he lays out some of his or composes some of his sketches. Santi has a great illustrative style and I love how a lot of his drawing like leans to the side. He's fairly nonchalant about perspective as well, and this lends his work like a childlike beauty. Similar to Inmar, he also uses a water brush, the brush with water in the handle. Uh, he also uses color pencils in conjunction with watercolor, and he also uses gouache as well. Santi's style is so distinctive, I can immediately tell the sketches by him. His style is somewhat more controlled than Inma's, but it has got that sort of special X factor that seems to radiate from this bunch of Spanish sketches we're checking out today. I really also enjoy Santi's sketches of condiments and uh, also of people as well. He does some wonderful sketches of like dinners, dinner parties or something, including who he's sitting up with and along with some handwritten notations as well. So I feel like his work is such an antidote to the very precise curated beauty that I see in some other sketches work. I see his work and I just feel like I can breathe. And I think that goes for everyone I mentioned in this video. And I don't really know if that even makes sense, but it's just kind of how I feel. As mentioned, Santi has a YouTube channel and he also has a book as well, which is also available on Amazon. So Santi's book is about depicting the color green in nature. 
And I think the book is only available in Spanish and French languages. I can't see an English version, but there there is a Kindle edition. Looking at these books on a color tablet screen is perfect. I obviously wouldn't recommend it for a black and white e-reader for obvious reasons, which up until this point, I've only had one of those, but I do have an iPad now, so... I can actually buy some art ebooks that I otherwise would not be able to get hold of. So that's really handy. Okay, moving on to number three uh, is a sketcher called Swoski. Um, first name Victor, last name Swoski. I think he pretty much goes by the name Swoski though. And he's also a professional illustrator and is from Barcelona. And he's another one who's worked with some big clients in the field, in the advertising field. But seeing his urban sketches, you can really tell that that's his place to sort of relax and let loose. I don't actually know a great deal about Swoski, but I've obviously seen his name around um, a lot uh, in the general field of urban sketching. And uh, I see his name come up again and again in association with Pushing Your Sketching Boundaries, which is an organization that arranges a lot of workshops, mainly in-person workshops, um, which is really cool. And I think he he's a regular teacher for them in their workshops. And he also helped organize the Urban Sketching Symposium in Barcelona back in 2013. And I think he also teaches art at university level as well. What I love about his work is that he seems to pick like an unusual angle or perspective, which makes his sketch like super dynamic. And he, he, like a few of the others on this list, really likes to flatten things. And he's not too fussed about formal perspective but he uses colour and line to show depth in his sketch instead. I think he mainly uses ink and watercolour, but he also uses colour pencil, and in his final sketch that I'm showing here, he's using Posca markers as well. I think you'll find pretty much everyone on this list uses mixed media, and I think this helps to bring a fresh, vibrant, yet loose and energetic spirit to all of their sketches. The next Spanish sketcher I would like to mention is Maru Goras. I think you've heard me talk about Maru before, to be honest. She was such a gem of a discovery. I can't believe that I only discovered her relatively recently, like in the last couple of years. She seems to be a mainstay on the urban sketching circuit, if you want to call it that. And uh, she's offered workshops at some of the previous symposiums and, and things like that. So I really encourage you to follow her on Instagram if you don't already. Her reels are just next level. They're so good. They're so much fun to watch. I don't even really like reels at all. I actively avoid them, in fact, but but Maru's reels are brilliant. Maru is also a professional illustrator and has again worked with lots of big clients, including magazines and book publishers. And she also has two Domestica classes. So the first one um, is Pictorial Sketchbook in Gouache, which is excellent. And I've watched it several times. She teaches her way of sketching as well as how she uses gouache. And her second class is to do with acrylic painting. I actually haven't seen this one as I don't own any acrylic paints and I don't really intend to go down that particular rabbit hole anytime soon. But if you um, like Maru's style and you're into acrylic painting... I'm sure the class will be excellent, so do check it out. By the way, guys, all the links to things I mentioned in this video are in the description below, so you can just check them out there. And uh, Maru has a fantastic way of flattening scenes. Again, she layers colors to to, create depth. And as mentioned before, she has taught a workshop in the past called Gouache Like a Child. Her style is childlike, yet breathtaking at the same time. Like, really, how does she do it? I challenge you to try and paint like Maru. It may look easy, but it's really not. Her sense of design is so clear and I love her bold choice of colours as well. Maru also enjoys using huge sketchbooks, uh, bigger than A4, and you'll see see what I mean if you do take that gouache uh, domestic, of course. She also tends to make her own sketchbooks and she does a bit of a design on the front cover to differentiate them. So even the outside of her sketchbooks are fun to look at. I just love everything about Maru's work and her overall attitude to art making. I highly recommend her her gouache domestica class. And I also highly recommend binge scrolling her Instagram feed. You just can't come away not feeling inspired. So my final mention is a sketcher called Natalia. She's my wild card for today's video. And I totally discovered her by chance on Instagram. And lo and behold, guess what? She's from Spain. So obviously I knew I had to mention her in this video because she entirely embodies everything I'm talking about in this video today. 
So Natalia is an illustrator and interior designer. And in fact, she's not from Spain. She's actually Colombian, um, which is quite clearly labeled on her Instagram profile, which I missed. Um, but she uh, lives in Barcelona. And to be honest, that's good enough for me. <laughs> she has um, a great quote on her about page on her on her website where she talks about her process. So she says, my artistic process is based on observation and mixed media. To achieve an illustration rich in textures with vibrant colors that evoke freshness and freedom is my goal. Creating is always better when it's fun. So the words freedom and fun really stick out to me in that statement. I love that she unashamedly draws like a child. Her color palette is gorgeous. It's so bright and primary. And some of her work, such as her use of the black pencil and the slant of her buildings, it really reminds me of Santi Salas. And I spied a similar use of swatches in the corner as well. And I really love this. I'd love to know if Santi is actually one of her inspirations. I think you just can't help but smile when you see Natalia's work. It's just so full of joy and energy. So again, I really recommend hopping over to Instagram and giving her a follow over there because I just love it when her sketches pop up in my feed. Okay, so I haven't mentioned notable Spanish urban sketches who also blow my socks off like Alicia Aradia and La Pan and Miguel Herranz, etc. And I'm sure there's plenty more that are escaping my brain right now. And I haven't mentioned them because they didn't fit with the style that I'm highlighting here. I really wanted to focus on this wild and free childlike style of illustration that abandons most formal art rules and just makes you want to play in your sketchbook immediately. I have a bit of a series now where I highlight the work of some of my favourite urban sketches in different themes or styles and, and such like. So if you do want to check out um, some more of these videos, then here are some uh, examples on the screen of some that I have. And as mentioned previously, for weekly tutorials and inspiration, please do consider joining Patreon. We are looking at sketching with freedom this month and diving a bit deeper on exactly the style we've been talking about here today. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.